Tom Mix, Ross, and straight shooters are on the air from coast to coast. When it's Ross and time in Texas, then it surely is a treat. Got much full flavors, Ross and Big Golden West and Green. Flame with as it is, delicious, and you find before you're through. With a lot of cream, but you're tasting it's a top for breakfast too. Ask your mother in the morning, serve you up a steamy plate. It's a grand hot whole wheat cereal, and the cow was sent it great. Once you try it, you have to buy it. Tom says it's well to eat. In the Jimmy too, say it's best for you, Ross and cereal can't be beat. Tom Mix suspects Jack Sargent of smuggling a gun into the Dolby jail and giving it to Simon Blake so that the dangerous outlaw could use it to make sure of his escape. One reason for Tom's suspicion is that Sargent's own gun is mysteriously missing. If Tom can prove that Sargent gave Blake that gun, he'll have a valuable piece of evidence to help him in his fight for James. Now, Tom has asked the sheriff to post a posse around the base of Ballface Mountain in the belief that Blake is hiding there and that they can starve him out. If they succeed in capturing Blake, Tom may find the outlaw is carrying Sergeant's gun. And if this is true, Sergeant will be in a mighty bad spot. Meanwhile, Tom has heard no word from the Wrangler whom he sent east in search of witnesses. Well, a new visitor arrived at the TM Bar Ranch yesterday. Professor Wallace, a lovable but absent-minded old scientist, has come west to help Tom with his plan to create a national park. In just a moment, we'll take you out to Dolby. But first, here's James. Hi, sir, Shooter. These flashlights that Tom's offering to send you are the swellest flashlights you ever saw. Take us and I use them for signaling to each other. You see, just by turning a little dial on the end of the flashlight, you can make a pair of red, a green, or a white light. It's really three flashlights in one. I carry mine around with me all the time. It's not only swell for signaling, but simply grand for hiking or camping trips. You can find your way around your house in the dark. You've never seen a flashlight like this one. They've been made just for Tom and aren't sold anywhere. So if I were you, I'd order one right away because they're going fast. Here's one glad to tell you how easy it is to get yours. Straight shooters, to get Tom's beautiful streamlined pocket-sized flashlight with battery and bulb all ready to use, a flashlight that at the simple turn of a dial will throw a red, a green, or a white light, here's all you have to do. Simply print your name and address on the backs of two Ralston box tops and mail to Tom Mix, number one, Checkerboard Square, St. Louis, Missouri. That's all you have to do, and this handsome flashlight is yours. If you prefer, send only one Ralston box top and 10 cents in coins. Be sure to send box tops from Ralston, the grand hot whole wheat cereal that is so good to eat and so good for you. This offer is made only in the United States. Be sure to get your order in tonight. And now, come on out to Dolby. Lawyer Snood and his nephew William have just dropped in at the TM Bar Ranch. Lawyer Snood has gone inside to talk to Tom, leaving William out with James. Listen. William, please don't do that. Why not? Because it hurts him. Come here, Checker. Yeah, he's nothing but a little old dog. You wouldn't like it if someone twisted your ears, would you? I didn't twist them very hard. Say, look at that bird up there in that tree. Bet you can't hit him with a rock. Well, I wouldn't want to. Why not? Because I like birds. Well, I don't. And watch me hit him. William, please. Say, you let go of my arm, Jane. You catch your rocket bird. I'll call my uncle. All right, call your uncle, William. Say, you better be pretty nice to me, I guess you better. I'm trying to be, William. Only you can't throw rocks at birds with poor checkers ears. Oh, can't I? My father's a pretty important man, I guess. Well, maybe he is, I guess but... I can do just about whatever I want. I guess nobody can tell my father what to do. No matter how important people are, if they do something wrong, someone will stop them. Oh, that's what you think. I guess you just wish you had a father like mine. Well... That's that Tom. Tom Mix? <laughs> he isn't your father. No, he's not my real father, William. But he's sort of a father. You see, I'm an orphan. You are not. Who told you that? Tom. I asked him after you laughed at me that day in Dolby and he called me then. Well, you're not an orphan. And Tom Mix can't say he's any kind of a father. Because you've already got one. What do you mean, William? I know who your father is. I listened at the door when he told my Uncle Amos. 
Then he told you Uncle Amos what? Said he was your father. You want to know who it was, Jane? No, you're, you're just joking. Eh, you wait and see how much of a joke it is. When he comes to take you away from here. Just wait, that's all. Then who comes to take you away, William? Jack Sergeant, that's who. Jack Sergeant? Yes. He's your real father. Now, he and Tom Mix had a big argument about you. Right in my Uncle Amos's office. I heard him. Sergeant's going to have Tom arrested. And make him give you to him. Have Tom arrested? Sure. They'll probably put him in jail for years and years. And then the police will come and get you. You'll have to go and live with the ass sergeant or... Well, they'll, they'll probably put you in jail, too. But, William, it, it's not so. You're making it up. It can't be so. Oh, just wait and see. That's all. Yep. <laughs> guess you won't be telling people not to throw lots of birds then. Yeah, I guess you'll be pretty sorry you didn't treat me nice out here at the ranch. <laughs> Because you won't be living here at the ranch anymore. Is that so? Cry, baby, cry, baby. Come on, shake Come on. <laughs> cry, baby, cry. Stick your finger in your eye. Tell your father it was I. Cry, baby, cry. And while William talks Jane, inside the ranch house, Tom is concluding a conference with William's uncle. There's nothing more to say about the matter, Lawyer Snood. Matt, Mr. Mix, after all... Nothing we... you have shown me has in the slightest way convinced me that Jack Sargent is Jane's father. <laughs> you are being very foolish, Mr. Mix. That happens to be your opinion, Snood, not mine. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, indeed, Mr. Mix. <laughs> no offense intended. But uh, you must consider the evidence I have will, without a doubt, convince the court that my client, Mr. Sargent has a legal right to Jane. The case hasn't come to court yet, Snood. No. No, but it will, Mr. Mix. It will. The papers have already been filed with Judge Parsons. Yes, he told me they had. But I may have some evidence of my own to present to Judge Parsons' lawyer, Snood. Evidence that'll throw your client's case right out of court. Really? Uh, you, uh, you have this evidence, Mr. Mix? Not at the moment, uh, no. Oh, oh, I understand. You're uh, counting on Wrangler to find it for you, eh? I understand he went east the other night. Yes. Yes, it was the night that your other client, Simon Blake, broke jail, lawyer Snood. Yes. That's a very unfortunate occurrence, wasn't it? It'll be more unfortunate for the ones who helped Blake if we can discover who they are. Oh, oh undoubtedly, Mr. Nix. Uh, uh, now, now about this Jack Sargent matter, I, uh, I wouldn't count too much on what Wrangler is able to dig up, Mr. Nix. Why not? Well, witnesses lose their memory after several years, and it was witnesses he went to find, wasn't it, Mr. Nix? Did I say that? No, no, just guessing, just guessing. <laughs> but, um, well, this fight for the custody of Jane may last a long time. And court cases run into money. Run into money. Now, wouldn't it be better for both parties if we came to some kind of an agreement? What do you mean by an agreement, Snood? A uh, financial agreement, Mr. Nix. Uh, Mr. Sargent, my client, realizes how much affection you have for the child. Of the care and attention you have lavished upon her since the time she was a baby. My client, my dear Mr. Mix, is most grateful. And he feels that you are entitled to some compensation for your benevolence. In substantiation of this fact, he is sincerely willing to amply repay you for all you have done for his motherless daughter. Putting that in plain, short words, you mean Jack Sargent wants to buy me off? Oh, really, Mr. Mix? That Instead is... of a fight, which he isn't as sure of winning as you tried to make me believe, he wants to make it a deal of dollars and cents. No, Mr. Mix. He wants me to figure out to the penny how much I think Jane's worth to me. Well, I'll tell you how much she's worth to me, Snood, and you can repeat it word for word to your client. She's worth every cent I've got with a TM bar ranch thrown in. And if it takes that much to fight Jack Sargent through every court in the country to keep Jane, she's worth it to me. Here's your hat, lawyer, Snoop. Go back to Dobie and tell your client what I said. But, uh, but now, now, Mr. Mix. Goodbye, Snoop. Uh, 
But, well, now, really, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, good day, Mr. Mix. Good day. Oh, oh. Sorry, Snoop. Oh, yes, yes, take us. Good day. The dog near run him down. Yes, home. Take care of telegrams just come for you. Thanks, take us. Look. If he comes back and says it's my fault that his nephew William just fell in the horse trough, don't you believe it? I was more than a foot away from William when he lost his balance and fell in. Of course, I was. Take us. Huh? His wife and Wrangler. Yeah? What's he say? He's located one of the three witnesses he went to find. Who is he? Tom Freeman. He was the engineer of the train that hit the car Jane and her father were in. Where well, is this train? He's living in Kyle's Wells, just 50 miles from here. What you gonna do, Tom? Tomorrow morning, I'm riding to Coyote Wells with Jane to see Mr. Freeman and find out just how much he remembers. Well, straight shooters. It looks as though the Wrangler has succeeded in locating a very important witness who lives just 50 miles from Dolby. That's a lucky break for Tom. But I wonder how much this Freeman will be able to tell Tom about the accident. Tom is working against time and every day counts. For Sergeant, you'll remember, has taken the matter to court in an effort to force Tom to turn Jane over to him. Unless Tom can prove that Sergeant is not Jane's father, he will have to give Jane up. And now here's Tom Nick. Straight shooters, I have found that working around the ranch and when I'm hiking and camping, I just can't get along without a flashlight. They're the handiest things in the world. Well, sir, some time ago I designed my own flashlight. One I could use not only to find my way around in the dark, but I could use the signal with, too. And everybody I've shown this flashlight to is so plumb crazy about it, I've had some made up special for all my straight shooter pals. This flashlight can't be bought anywhere. No, sir. It's streamlined pocket size. On the head, there's a little dial. And by turning this dial, you can make the flashlight show a uh, red green, or a white light. It's really three flashlights in one. I'm saving one of my flashlights just for you. And if you get your order in, I'll send it to you right away. Here's Lynn Grant to tell you how plumb easy it is to get yours. Thank you, Tom. Straight shooters, to get Tom's flashlight with battery involved all ready to use is all you have to do. Simply print your name and address on the backs of two Rawson bus stops and mail to Tom Mix, number one, Checkerboard Square, St. Louis, Missouri. That's all there is to it, and Tom's beautiful flashlight is yours. If you prefer, send only one Ralston box top and 10 cents in coin. This offer is good only in the United States. Be sure to send box tops from Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereal that Tom Mix recommends to give you cowboy energy. And hurry, hurry, hurry. They're going fast, so get your order in tonight. Mr. Freeman, do you remember an accident just outside of Dobie some years ago? A train hit a car carrying two men and a baby at a crossing. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember what the men in the car looked like? Tomorrow, Tom Mix talks to Freeman, the engineer of the train that was in the wreck in which Tom believes Jane's real father was killed. On this conversation, Jane's whole future may depend. Will Freeman identify Jack Sargent as Jane's father? Or will he say that Sargent is an imposter in the face? Be sure to listen. Hold oh, no, on now. I'll be above Jane Beaver. Look at it. It's round up time. So let's get to it. It's Rolfman time at breakfast. There surely is a treat. That much full flavored Rolfman made golden western wheat. Wrangler says it is easy. And you find it for your food. With a lot of free boys, you're safety. It's up for breakfast too. Ask your mother in the morning. Serve you up a steaming plate. It's round a whole wheat cereal. And the cowboys think it's great. Once you try it, you have to buy it. Tom says it's wild to eat. Then it can be too safe. That's for you. Rolfman cereal can be beat. To the announcer, Lynn Grant. Tom Mix was impersonated. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.